closer to 657. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen my channel comment or not, but, um, I know I said I would be back in three days, but today's Wednesday, so, three days, and, uh, uh so, I might have Mana, and, uh, I'll, uh, search it for you guys. Mononucleosis is often called the kissing disease. The virus that causes mono is transmitted through saliva, so you can get it through kissing, but you can also be exposed through a cough or a sneeze or by sharing glass or food you touch on with someone who has mono. However, mononucleosis isn't as contagious as some infections, such as the common cold. You most likely to get mononucleosis with all the signs and symptoms if you're an adolescent or young adult. So, young children usually have few symptoms, and the infection often goes unrecognized. If you have mononucleosis, it's important to be careful of certain complications, such as an enlarged spleen. Rest and adequate fluids are key to recovery. So, basically, um, it can last for months or up to a year. Um, I missed so much school lately, and my friends are worried I'm going to get held back. My teachers are more likely annoyed. But, I mean, I... Uh, you guys can't hear me. <coughs> <coughs> um, but, basically, turn up your speakers if you can't hear me. I can't talk any louder than this. But, um... So, I'm going to have to rest. I can't rip stick. I can't go on the computer much, I can't make videos, um, I can't go out to, to town or anything, um, I can't walk around too much, otherwise my spleen will be ruptured, I'll have to have emergency surgery and more likely be bedridden in the hospital for six months or something like that, and, um, so, um, I have to watch out in case my spleen explodes or something like that, and, um, I did say him behind the ribcage, like upper left abdomen. So, um, yeah. And I've been having some pain in my back and the front and my stomach. And I haven't shared anything with anyone who has mono. I mean, the last thing I shared was a Diet Coke. And my friends didn't have mono. None of them were sneezing or coughing or anything like that. They were perfectly fine, and they still are perfectly fine. Um, all we shared was a Diet Coke and Steak and Shake. That's it. Because we were dropped off before our football game and our mom went off. So we were dropped off and our mom came pick us, picked us back up. And all I shared was Annie's Diet Coke with our friends. And that's it. Nothing else. And none of them had mono. None of them. Um, so then I thought it was meningitis because my teacher had meningitis and she still came to school because she had left, she had not left, she had missed so much already. So she had to come in and no, I'm not wearing makeup if you're wondering. I haven't put on makeup in two days because um, I've been bedridden. So, um, and, uh, So, I completely forgot, I have been forgetting lately. Uh, so she had meningitis and she came to school anyway and I sit and I sat in the front row. Uh, my friend called me and told me to switch seats and told me where I sat and everything. So, um, so she came to school and I thought I had meningitis because she lost her voice but she could, she still talked like this and all. Her voice is really low and usually it's like really high. So, there's that, and then we tested for it, 
and uh, so we went to Phoebe Church's office yesterday, and I pulled I was pulled out of school early because um, I went down to the nurse's office because I was dizzy and I was warm, but I had goosebumps. So um, so she said I was dehydrated because my mouth was dry. I'm sorry. She was like, "Well, your your throat doesn't look that bad." I was like. If I have to talk like this, then it should look bad. But my temperature said it was normal, and my normal temperature is 97.6, and my temperature was 99.8. I was like, oh yeah, this is normal. Just two degrees above. So, um, green, I don't want to talk that far. So, um, so I, I'm doing this to cool off. So she gave me a Tylenol, and I already had two Tylenol severe congestion at 7.30, and this was at 10.10, and I had to wait like 8, 9, 10, or 11, or 12 hours before the next Tylenol. <coughs> <coughs> so she overdosed me, <coughs> and we went to the pediatrician's office to test for it. So I did a blood draw and fainted afterward, because on my dad's side of the family, naturally, after you get your blood drawn, you faint. You lose blood and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know what you're supposed to You can't really see it anyway. See that pink dot right there? That's my elbow right there. So um, that's where she um, did the blood draw. And yeah, I got blood. It's too stretchy. Um, so she did the blood draw. I fainted after that. Ten minutes later, ooh, where am I? So, um,. Then we went home. I missed a day at school. So, um, today, uh, they tested for meningitis because we eliminated meningitis. So, they tested for meningitis, and the, the diseases they're testing for are uh, mono and meningitis. And uh, they're still waiting for the mono test, which is going to come up tomorrow. Um, because the epo, epium bar or something like that. Um, so, uh, the meningitis test came back negative. And uh, they're still waiting for the mono test. So, I might have to be out of school for months, three months or five. I mean, I'm going to have to grab a screw up schedule at school if I go. Um, so if I do go to school, I'm going to go for like half a day and rest for 20 to 30 minutes. And then, um, and then I'll go home and bring my schoolwork with me. And then I'll turn it in and do the same thing, and then I might not go to school one day. Um, or not. I might have to have homeschooling, so I don't really know what I'm going to do. So... If you do see me on the video, I'll either be in my bed, in here, in a big brown chair that you guys see in the study room. If I'm in the study room, it's too much to get out of, out of the chair and walk down the staircase. So, um, I believe I'm going to be moving downstairs in my lodge room on the same floor as my parents. Um, so in case I meet them, it would be too much for me to walk downstairs or something like that. All I have to do is open the door and walk down the hall. Um, if you guys go to my, if you guys go to my home tour video, you guys will know the lodge room that I'm talking about. Uh, so then I, I usually wake up at nine, and normally I wake up at six. So. I've been more sleepy lately. I sleep 10 hours now, 10 or 11 hours, and usually I only sleep 8, so, and I'm not lying, I don't think I would be lying about this. My dad needs me. I'll be right back.
Dad was talking about the mall, man. But yeah. <coughs> I'm out of breath just from walking up and down the stairs. And I tried running up the stairs. I don't know why I have it. My back started to hurt. symptoms. I'll say check if I have it. Um, fatigue, tiredness, yes, check. Weakness, check. Sore throat, perhaps strep, a strep throat that doesn't get better with the antibiotics, check. Fever, check. Because my fever lately has been 100 degrees. Swollen lymph nodes in your neck and armpits. Lymph nodes in your neck. I don't really know what those are. Swollen tonsils, no, because I got my tonsils removed years ago. Headache, um, a few times a day. Skin rash, no, loss of appetite, yeah. Soft, swollen spleen, yeah, night sweats, and yeah, I've had, I woke up with sweating today. Uh, soft or swollen spleen, I can tell because if I even so much as jump, then, like, lower back and, like, upper right at upper left abdomen starts hurting and that's where the spleen is. Um, the virus typically has an incubation period of four to eight weeks, which is two months. There are four weeks in life, which is two months. Although in young children this period may be shorter, thank God. Signs and symptoms such as fever and sore throat usually lessen within a couple of weeks. The fatigue and large lymph nodes and the swollen spleen may last for a week. For a week, few weeks longer. So my sore throat will go away and my fever will go away. But I'll still have it. Um so causes of the Epstein Barr virus. There I'm waiting for my Epstein Barr test to come back. Enlarged spleen with a picture. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, if you guys think it's disgusting, I don't really care. It's not inappropriate. I'm trying to be serious here. Here's the picture, and there's the spleen right there on the upper, ab upper abdomen. And that's a guy, by the way. If you're a guy laughing right now, that is a guy picture. So, anyway. I'm gonna go because my throat's starting to hurt. So I'm gonna take one of my cough drops again. And I'm gonna go to bed. Even though it's 8 50.